If you're working with Python and building data pipelines, you've probably used Pandas or Polars. They're great, right? But here's the thing. DuckDB is different. It's an in-process database that you can literally pip install DuckDB and start using immediately. So what does a database bring to the table that your data frame library doesn't? So let's talk about six pragmatic reasons why DuckDB might be your new friend or your new pet. But first, a quick history lesson on why data frame became so popular and what they are missing today. So back in the 2000s, if you wanted to do analytics, you would install Oracle or SQL Server. Expensive license, complex setups, DBAs to manage connections. It was a nightmare for a quick analysis. Then Python exploded in popularity. Pandas came along and changed completely everything. Suddenly you could pre-install Pandas, write a few lines of codes and get immediate results. No DBAs, no license, no infrastructure edge. Just pure analysis in a Python process. Beautiful, right? So here is where things get messy. We've pushed data frames way beyond the original design. They were built for quick experimentation, in-memory computation, or one-off analysis. But we are now trying to use them for everything. With data frames libraries, they give you one slice of what a database does. And then you end up stitching together a bunch of other Python libraries to fill the gaps. So what if you could get the simplicity of data frames with the power of a real database? That's DuckDB. So let's start with the first point. The obvious one, it's an actual database. That means AC transactions. If anything fails into this pipeline, automatic rollback. Your data stays intact. No more corrupted parquet files because your pipeline crashed halfway through a wipe. And we all have been there. You're writing to a CSV or a parquet file and something happened and breaks. And now you've got half written garbage data. With DuckDB, that's not a problem. So that brings me to my second point. DuckDB has its own database file format. And when you create a DuckDB connection like this, the only thing that you have to do is provide a file path. Could it be local? Could it be on a blob storage? And that's it. Everything created is persisted in that file. Real schemas, metadata, acid currencies, data, all in one portable file. And you know that mess where you've got CSV files scattered around some parquet files over there, JSONs from an API somewhere else. Yeah, and with DuckDB, you can consolidate everything into a single database file with proper schemas and relationship. All right, point three, you get to know some modern Duck YouTube channel that you can subscribe. I'm just kidding, or not. Please subscribe. All right, point three. DuckDB has a built-in ecosystem of features. With DataFrame, you need different Python package for everything. You need to access AWS S3, install both or three. Parquet files, install PyArrow. PostgreSQL, you install PsyCop PG2. Welcome to Dependency Hell, and good luck when one of those updates breaks everything. DuckDB's extension are built in C++, maintained by the core team, and it just works. If you want to read from a public S3 bucket, a parquet file, one line, no setup. I mean, it cannot be more simple than that. If you want to connect to a Postgres database, two lines. You attach as a database and then now you can query your Postgres table, ingest it into DuckDB and process analytics. Behind the scene, DuckDB loads the extension automatically for you. No configuration, no dependency management. All right, point four. It's not just for Python. Hold on, I know the title of the video, but here's the important thing. DuckDB isn't locked into Python. So sure, you process data in Python, but eventually you need to serve it somewhere. Maybe a web application, a dashboard, whatever. And because DuckDB is an in-process, it can run anywhere. JavaScript in the browser to WebAssembly, Java backend service, REST application, and even the command line. I use often the CLI locally for a lot of ad hoc analysis. And here is the cool part. They can all read the same DuckDB file format. Your Python pipelines create the database and your JavaScript frontend, for example, queries it directly. Easy peasy. All right, point five, SQL. So I know some of you are thinking, but data frames look cleaner. And look, this is partially a syntax preference, but SQL is universal. It has been there since 1974 and it's here to stay. Your data analyst knows it, your backend engineers knows it, and your future self will thank you when you come back to this code in six months. Plus, DuckDB has a friendly SQL syntax that makes common tags ridiculously easy. You really have a lot of building function for 
everything. I'll put a link in the description regarding friendly SQL if you're curious about it. All right, final point, scaling to the cloud is trivial. With Motherduck, DuckDB in the cloud, moving your workflow from local to the cloud requires literally one line. See that? Instead of attaching a local database file, I basically attach a cloud database and assuming I have a Motherduck token in my environment, I'm ready to run any same queries now to the cloud. And I also have, of course, the storage managed by Motherduck. Your code doesn't change, your SQL doesn't change, you just get cloud scale when you need it. All right, Mary, how do I get started? Well, I have a bunch of video for you to get started, but first, the point important is that you don't need to rewrite everything if you're coming from Pandas or Polar. Thanks to Apache Arrow, DuckDB has a zero copy integration with Pandas and Polar. So no conversion overhead, start small, refactor what makes sense or which is too slow and gradually adopt more DuckDB features. So yeah, DuckDB is way more than just another data frame library. It is a full database that is as easy to use as Pandas, but with actual database features when you need them. I'll put a video right there if you want to get started. Catch you in the next one.